Hello everyone, this is Craig Merriweather and welcome to Depression 180. On this show we're going to be discussing depression. Now that's something that affects a lot of people in the world. It's quite possible that depression will touch your life at some point, whether you struggle with it yourself or a loved one does or maybe a co-worker. It's something that has somewhat of a stigma attached to it and people may be embarrassed to admit that they're, they're struggling with it, that there's something wrong. So they ignore it or they, you know, they just put it on the back burner so that hopefully it will just go away. But it, it doesn't go away and it may even get worse. So I wanted to create a show that could hopefully lift the stigma attached to depression. And in each episode we're going to be going over the different aspects of depression. What uh, depression really is and what the real reasons depression may show up in your life, why they show up. And we're going to talk about antidepressants and what they will actually do to the brain. And we're going to go over some scientifically proven methods for eliminating depression. Now in this episode, I'm going to be talking about depression and genetics. Now genetics is just such a huge topic. So I'm not going to go way in depth about uh, genetics and how they run the body. But there's been some really interesting research that has come out recently about genetics and depression that I wanted to share. Now, I, I don't want to make these shows overly long. I want to give you the information you need and ways where you can find out more information if you want it. So here's my promise to you. that I'll give you as much information as I can in the time that we have together. And at the end of the show, if you're interested, I'll tell you how you can take it further and deeper. So, is depression caused by genetics? Now, a lot has been written about depression and genetics and whether depression is inherited from your parents' DNA. And there's been a, a great deal of confusion and false information really flowing around there. But recent research has finally answered this complex question. Now, why do people believe a depression may be genetic? Well, mainly because depression seems to run in families. But that could also be due to modeled behavior in the home. So when researchers want to explore genetics and behavior, they look at studies done with identical twins. Now, to refresh your high school biology, Identical twins are produced when a single sperm fertilizes a single egg, and that egg divides, forming two separate beings, and they have the exact same genetic makeup, the same genetic coat. Therefore, they look alike, they're always the same sex, they're, they're always the same blood type. Now, not just any identical twins will do. Scientists like identical twins who have been separated at birth. That way, they can be sure that any sort of shared personality trait is not just modeled behavior from the home. Now, the World Health Organization estimates about 15% of this planet's population struggles with depression. Yet, when identical twins are raised apart from each other, research has shown that if one twin becomes depressed, the other will also become depressed about 67% of the time. Now, this rate is, is, is staggering, implying that there there's, has to be some sort of gen, genetic marker related to depression. However, it's not 100% of the time. So consequently, there has to be something else besides genetic that's triggering the despair and the sadness. Well, the, the defining word about this question may have come in a January uh, study that was released in um, 2013. Now, this is reported in the magazine Science News, and the study was published in the journal Biological Psychiatry. And the studies were really interesting, and the title of the article pretty much says it all. Depression, Gene Search, Disappoints. And it goes on to say in the first paragraph that a massive effort to uncover genes involved in depression has largely failed. By combing through the DNA of 34,549 volunteers, an international team of 86 scientists hope to uncover genetic influences that affect a person's vulnerability to depression, but the analysis turned up nothing. Now, the, the failure to find any sort of depression gene strongly suggests that there's no specific DNA that makes you sad. It also shows that the, the genes of depressed people are not damaged or distorted in any way compared with the genes of people who are not depressed. Now, as the research of Dr. Bruce Lupton proved, and this is what he wrote about in his book, Biology of Belief, genes do not control your biology. DNA doesn't control your physiology because control requires activity. So if there's a light switch in the room and you turn it on and off and on and off, you can't say the light switch is controlling the light. 
If you left the room, the light switch isn't going to keep turning the light on and off again. An outside force must activate the light switch. Now, this is the same with your, your genetics. Your genetics just don't turn on and off. There has to be some outside force. So what study seems to indicate is that there's possibly a predisposition to depression, but there's no specific uh, depression gene, no depression code that is within your DNA. Now, this is great news because this means that you are not a victim. You are not a victim of your genes, of your DNA. Again, you may be predisposed, possibly, because we still have that 67% identical twins research, but you may inherit a vulnerability to depression, not the disorder itself. Some outside event must come into your environment and activate the gene. Now, another uh, study that was released in Science Magazine was, was sh uh, showing that two variants of the 5-HTT gene, it lowered serotonin output, and serotonin is that brain chemical that uh, creates happiness and feelings of well-being. Now, it lowered serotonin output and caused depression in a person, but only after the person experienced numerous stressful events, particularly financial setbacks. So, and it really is not even the outside event, but your, your brain's uh, perception of that event that switches the genes on and off. So, you might inherit some sort of predisposition, maybe, to depression, but not to disor the disorder itself. So if you can't blame depression on genetics, your DNA, and you don't catch depression like the flu or the common cold, then what is depression? Now, depression is a symptom produced by the brain. Both uh, it's, it's vague, it's am ambiguous. Uh, neuroscientist and author Dr. Daniel Amen says that, quote, giving people the diagnosis of depression is exactly like giving them the diagnosis of chest pain. Now, what he means by that is, like, if you go to the doctor with chest pain, you need to find, uh, have the doctor find out why you're having pain in your chest. That's why you go to the doctor. You just don't want them to give you a morphine injection to, to kill the pain. That doesn't help you anyway. It may give away the pain, but it doesn't help the, the cause of the, the chest pain. Are you having a heart attack? Do you have a cracked, cracked rib? Do you have heartburn from last night's dinner? Uh, are you having a panic attack or, or hepatitis or maybe lung cancer, a tumor, maybe a gunshot wound? You know, there's dozens and dozens of possibilities as to why there may be pain in your chest. And the point of going to the doctor when you have chest pains is to identify the problem and find ways to fix it. The possible origins of depression are, are many, and there seems to be this popular notion that depression can be explained very simply and easily, that depression is due to some biochemical disparity in the brain and, and finding the right pill or combination of pills, it will go away. However, the origins of depression are, are not clear-cut. Really what depression is, is a signal from the, the mind to the body that there's something wrong, sort of like physical pain. Uh, physical pain is the mind's, uh, the brain's attempt to get the attention of the body, to get your hand off that stove, or you, you've just stepped on a nail and you need to get that thing out, or you, it's trying to get your attention. Depression is the same way. It's like you, it's your body's version of the check engine light in your car. And I know that sounds somewhat s simplistic, but your unconscious mind is trying to get your attention of the ever-distracted conscious mind, that there's something physically, mentally, or emotionally wrong. And if you keep ignoring it, the volume on the pain will only get turned up. You need to find out what the issue is and deal with that specific issue and just not cover over the check engine light with some duct tape. When you understand how stress and traumatic experiences, physical injury, thought patterns, illness, poor nutrition, when you realize that anyone can struggle with depression, it's not a, a fault of your mental capacity, it's not a fault of a, a bad character or bad values or bad morals or anything. It's something that is wrong with the physical makeup of your body, possibly, or uh, an emotional issue that needs to be dealt with, or a thought pattern issue that needs to be dealt with. Now, research has shown that there are four very different underlying causes of depression. Illness, or imbalance in your body's physiology. Medications and environmental toxins, they can cause depression. Emotional and psychological trauma, of course, that causes depression. Your automatic thought patterns, 
those can cause depression. A mixture of some of those or maybe all four of those together, that can cause depression to show up in your life. I myself struggled with depression for a really long time. And the problem for me was that I was feeling sad, dejected, hopeless, but that felt normal. I I really didn't know that there was something wrong. It just that had become my emotional set point. Life just sucked and that's the way it was. And one day I, I just got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. I just felt so bad. I had been feeling bad for so long, for so many years, uh, the, the despair, the, the hopelessness, that I just wanted it to be done. And uh, I realized, though, that my family was suffering along with me. And I was modeling this behavior for my son. I was, you know, not participating in the relationship with my wife. Uh, I was kind of making everybody miserable, my, myself included, of course. And I just realized I, I've had enough, and this is, has to end one way or another. Now, there's three options. I could um, just stay the way I was. That's d- certainly an op- option, not a good one. There was, you know, taking myself out. I could have just said, you know, I've had enough of this. I could have um, gone and, and taken an overdose of pills or something like that, taking myself out. Terrible, terrible uh, option. So the only really good option was to find my way up and out. It was a hard decision to make because it was committing to lifestyle change. It was committing to learning about depression and researching and and that becoming my all-consuming need to to find my way out. And But I made that decision and I, I realized that there's a big difference between acceptance and resignation. Now, I could accept that I was depressed, full of anxiety, and tired of life, but I didn't have to be resigned to stay that way forever. And that's when the light went on. You know, I just, I had to end my depression. I didn't want to feel like this anymore. So I knew I had the capabilities and the abilities to get myself out if I was willing to take action. Now I have a, had a little bit of a problem. I didn't have any money, and I didn't have any health insurance. So what I did is it became a huge, massive self-help project, and I sought out every way possible to end depression. I, I looked and I, I read all the books. I went through programs, uh, webinars, workshops, anything I could find. And um, for for various reasons that we'll get into in, in other episodes, I, I didn't want to do any presents. I knew some people who had been on antidepressants and it was a horrible experience for them. Maybe you've tried them, maybe you're on them now, maybe you know somebody who's been on them. And it was just, it was a horrible experience. I, I talked with them and and it just did not sound like it was something I wanted to deal with. So I tried every other way possible. I tried different methods, therapies, exercises, changed my diet. And I would rise up again, and I'd feel happy, and then I'd be dragged down again, and I made massive improvements, and I made massive mistakes, and I hit massive walls, but I, I kept going, and I kept trying, because I was so determined. I, I was so determined not to feel depressed anymore. And I worked on it, and I worked on it, and I worked on it, and one day I realized that it had been a long time since I had I felt sad and hopeless and angry at life. And I was actually feeling good about myself, though really nothing in my outside world had changed. I had changed what was within me. I had changed the inner game. And I would ended the overwhelm, and I would ended the emotional pain I was dealing with. The the sorrow and despair were gone. And I had changed my life. And here's the thing. If I can do this, then you can too. Now, why do I believe that? See, I'm not a psychologist, and I'm not a neuroscientist, I'm not a therapist, uh, I'm not a brain surgeon. I'm just a guy who struggled with depression for a really long time. I'm, I'm a walking, living, breathing representative of what's possible. I ended my depression. I achieved greatness in my life. And, and the good news is you can too, because, you see, you and I were the same, our bodies work the same ways. Our, our cells take in signals and information the same way. Our brain cells wire together the same way. We are the same. So if I can do this, you can too. You are capable of greatness. 
Now, in Malcolm Gladwell's wonderful book called Outliers, he explains the 10,000-hour rule to mastery. And the rule states that mastery of any subject comes not through innate talent that you're born with, but through practice, approximately 10,000 hours of practice. So, for instance, you decide to master the piano, and you pledge to practice every day for four hours. That's Sundays, holidays, vacations, your birthday. It would take six years and eight months to reach 10,000 hours. If you were only to practice piano two hours a day, it would take you 13 and a half years. Now, looking at that, I, I realized I was a master at only one thing. I was master at depression. And taking this to heart, I decided to become a master of getting out of depression. And not just depression, but what I have learned also works on other stuck emotions like anger and anxiety, shame and grief. By the time I realized I'd gotten myself out of depression and was feeling good about myself and my life, I had this huge toolbox full of scientifically proven methods for getting out of depression. And so I put them into a, a program I created called the Depression 180 Program. Wendy Love, the creator and author of the award-winning blog DepressionGateway.com, she says this about the Depression 180 Program. She says, This is one of the best, most thorough books on depression I have read, and I have read most of them is the most thorough account of all the strategies you could possibly employ to manage depression. I put this program together because it was what I would have liked to have had when I made the commitment to end my depression. It has all the information you need. It's broken up into five sections. The first section, I talk about your emotional set point and how that could be sabotaging your success and happiness. The five necessary requirements for change. The four real causes of depression, and that's a full, unedited version. I also go into massive detail about why antidepressants might not be the best answer to eliminating depression in your life, and that the, how the research shows that antidepressants may actually cause depression, violence, and suicide. I'll also show you why you need to take responsibility for your life, no matter what has happened in the past. Now, in Section 2, you learn how to use movement, nutrition, sleep, to affect the chemistry of your brain in order to release the positive hormones and neurotransmitters. We'll go through why exercise and movement are essential to eliminating depression. We'll go into how the food you put in your body may actually be causing your depression. I show you what you need to eat and what you absolutely should not be eating. I give you the precise supplements and vitamins you need to be taking on a daily basis to keep your brain and body depression free. I show you why not getting enough sleep each night is keeping you depressed, fat, and aging you faster. And I'll also show you what the advertisers and politicians already know about TV, that it automatically puts you in a hypnotic trance and may be keeping you depressed. Now, in Section 3, I'll teach you the three methods for dealing quickly with depression flare-ups, as well as how to eliminate automatic negative thoughts, how to neutralize negative emotions, negative memories, and deep-rooted hurt, as well as how to get rid of stuck emotions. Section 3 is worth the entire cost of the program on its own, for I teach you cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, study after study proves that this is one of the most effective treatments for both anxiety and depression. And I give you the 15 best cognitive behavioral therapy exercises to help you take back control of your emotions and end automatic negative thoughts. I'll teach you the 10 ways your thoughts and emotional reactions are sabotaging your success and happiness. You'll also learn how to get rid of unwanted, unhealthy emotions in 90 seconds, and that's no joke. I also teach you the science and research behind hypnotherapy and why it's one of the best and easiest therapies for depression. I'll also show you what you need to do if you're experiencing suicidal thoughts. Now in section four, you'll learn how to create a thriving environment around you, an environment that will keep depression from ever claiming a permanent part of your life again. You'll learn how to find and work with a coach to master your mental patterns, emotions, and behaviors if you choose to do so how using light therapy might be the thing that solidifies your happiness, why laughing, and this again, no joke, why laughing is about the best thing you could do for your brain and your emotional well-being, and I list over 100 research studies that prove it, and why it's absolutely essential that you create a team of supporting, nurturing friends to help you reach your goals and dreams, and I'll show you how to go about creating that team. Now in section five, in this final section, I'll teach you what recovering heroin addicts train to do that keeps them from reverting back to hard drugs for comfort when they're struggling with life challenges. I'll tell you the top 
five reasons why you should never give up. And finally, I'll give you the recipe for creating long-lasting happiness in your life. Now, that's just the Depression 180 guidebook. You'll also get the audio version of the Depression 180 guidebook, which you can download on MP3s. I'll also give you six hypnotherapy sessions to help eliminate anger, worry, shame, guilt, and create happiness in your life. And there's two versions of each of those sessions. And one has a wake-up call at the end, so you can wake up and get on with your day. But the other is for bedtime, and it will help you drift off to sleep and wake up feeling refreshed and relaxed. There are PDF worksheets of all 16 cognitive behavioral exercises. There's guided audio recordings of all 16 cognitive behavioral exercises. There's also a guided visual exercise to reduce or even eliminate strong negative emotions from memories of past experiences such as fear, anxiety, anger, shame, and and other unwanted emotions. Plus, there's a guided pattern interrupt exercise that will stop the flow of negative brain chemistry that's causing depression, fear, and anger, and will help flood yourself with positive brain chemistry to create happiness and joy. Now I want you to go to depression180.com and check out the Depression 180 program and all it has to offer. While you're there, I also want you to sign up and get an audio download of the four real causes of depression plus what antidepressants do to the brain. And those are MP3 recordings you can listen to. And it gives you all the information you need to know about antidepressants in the brain and also how depression can get created within your body and your brain. You also find links to my YouTube channel, which has great videos on depression and how to eliminate it, and to the Depression 180 Facebook page, so like that as well. So this has just been an introduction to show you that you are not a victim, that depression can be eliminated from your life. I did it for myself. I know that you can do it. If you're willing to take responsibility, to take action, to make a decision, to make a commitment to your life, to make your life better. You deserve to feel happy. You deserve to have happiness and joy in your life every day. Now, I want to make it clear. I don't think there are bad emotions and good emotions. I believe there's a a reason why you may need to feel sadness in your life or you may need to feel grief, certainly, or um, anger. Uh, There may be a reason why you need to be feeling anger at the moment or maybe even stress in your life, uh, especially, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and there, you smell smoke and, you, you know, your house is on fire. You want that fight or flight sy- system, response system to kick in. But it's when those emotions become normal, like what happened in my life, when those start feeling normal, when those are the emotional set point that you live with every day, that is when you have a problem. That is when it's gone from just the normal human experience to having a serious problem that you need to look at. Your mind is trying to get your attention by manifesting depression in your life. I don't know why. There are so many reasons you know, that I, I'll discuss on this show that uh, you can go to depression180.com and download that audio, The Four Real Causes of Depression, and find out more about that. You have the ability to change your life, but it's your responsibility. It's your life. You can do it. And through this show, we're going to give you some great ideas on how to do that. Go to the YouTube channel, find out more there. Uh, And again, depression180.com. Tons of great information on that site. And lastly, I just want to tell you, thank you for listening today. Congratulations on taking this first step towards ending depression. You're an amazing person. So thank you again, and we'll talk to you next time. (laughs) 